Jesus. Every day is the same Jesus. Oh, how sweet the precious name, the name Jesus. I love thy name, Jesus. Every day is the same, Jesus. Oh, how sweet the precious name, the name. Jesus, hallelujah. You may have a seat, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly, God is an awesome God. He is worthy to be praised, hallelujah. Before I start, I'd like to pray, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your tender kindness, Lord God. I ask you to remember, Lord God, your people, Lord God. Keep us, Lord God, the way we should go. Remember our pastor, remember the bishop. We thank you, Lord, for them, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to bring your word to your people, Lord God. Let it be clear, Lord God. Open up their spirits, Lord, to receive it. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. This morning, our scripture we found in Genesis one, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And in John chapter 1, verse 1, says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Some have called me a her. Some say that they don't care to know me. Some say that if I exist, I am unknown or can't be known. Some have called me Allah or the God. Some say that I am three persons, including personalities or wills or even beings. Some say that I didn't make man, but man made me. Some say I don't need God because I make things come into existence by my hard work. Some ask if there is a God, why is the world falling apart? Some say that I am mighty, but not almighty. Not only am I going to tell you who I am, but I'm going to show you who I am. I am the power that worketh in Christ. I am the beginning before there was time, let me begin. The title is called The Power of a Dual Nature in Christ. In the beginning, saints, before the world was confusion and emptiness, I, Elohim, not the plurality of persons, but the Hebrew plural, was used as an extensive for denoting the greatness and majesty and multiple attributes of God, not three persons as some may suggest. Truly, Scripture has clearly said that Isaiah in 43 and 10, Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Amen. Isaiah 44 and 24 says, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretches forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth the earth by myself. John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was the Word, but God's Word, of course, was in his mind, and not by his side, as some people say. In Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6 says, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God, none. God has spoke this world into existence and fashioned it according to his will. But as we dwell further, we see that in the beginning, the earth was finished at some point. In between verses, water covered the original earth. 
because of sin of Lucifer. This was considered the eternal past when Lucifer ruled on earth before he decided that he wanted to take over the throne of God and say to himself in Isaiah 14 and 13, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. He was then cast out, and Adam was given the authority to rule from the garden, saints. The Bible doesn't say how long Adam was on the earth before he sinned, but death was placed upon him because of disobedience. At this time, God seen the future state of man and had decided that a lamb should be slain before the foundation of the world. And he, Jesus, would bruise Satan's head and Satan would bruise his heel. The word or power of God was set in motion so that the Messiah would come down through time and set up a kingdom that would never be destroyed. Quickly, man became more wicked each day and God again would destroy the earth by water. But God did have a man, his name was Noah that walked upright before him as well as his whole house, saving them to replenish the earth. But again, man soon multiplied and sin became rampant again. And by promises of God to Noah, he wouldn't flood the earth again. God began to search as he does now for men that would do his will and be willing vessels. The power of God can never be stopped now or in the world to come. What God says will come to pass. It will come to pass. Year after year, century after century, time goes by, and the blood of Christ was woven in the course by sacrificial lambs, which was a type and shadow of he that was to come. In each generation, God chose men and women to eventually get to the promise. Abram was chosen to come out from among his kindred until a land God showed him. He passed through Canaan unto a place called Sikkim, unto the plain of Morah. It was his obedience unto God that was accounted unto, for righteous, unto him for righteousness. Then having Isaac, and Isaac having Jacob, continued with the plan of God. Even though his mistakes were made along the way, God still remained faithful to his men. Even when Joseph was sold as a slave into Egypt, God still had a plan for the deliverer that would come years later. Moses was called. We all know about Moses. He led the children of Israel out of Egypt through Potter Hiroth and Migdal and through the Reed Sea. The people of God murmured, complained. Aaron makes a golden calf. Dathan and others rose up against God, resulting in God opening the earth, causing it to swallow them. Moses striking the rock instead of speaking to it caused him to miss the promised land. But still after that, the promises continued with Joshua and then some of the most famous judges, Gideon, Jephthah, Samson, Othanel, Ehud, Shamgar, Deborah, and Barak, Ruth, and Boaz, Naomi. These were just some of the dynamic people of God chose to keep his promise to bring about our Savior. I have found out that God's power keeps things together even in the toughest times. Need I say more, but I will. The prophet Ezekiel, Daniel, Jose, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, and so on, these men, by the spirit of God's power, foretold of the one that was to come, born in the manger, born in Bethlehem, Ephrata, saying, Out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth has been from old, from everlasting. That's Micah 5, 2. Zechariah 12, 10 says, They shall look upon me, whom they have pierced. And we know who this is. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. I love, saints, the way God keeps his promises. 
his exact times and dates just to deliver this undeserving world out of hell. In Christ is prophecy fulfilled in Matthew. Chapter 1 truly shows us the direction of where God was going. It wasn't a perfect lineage, but it was good enough for the Messiah to come through. Saints, just because we have bad people in our family, just because we have bad blood in our family, just because flowing through Ancestry.com, God can fix it in such a way, and when people see the outcome of what God has done for you and I, they will give him praise, and you will be a witness unto his goodness. The psalmist says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Who is man? Who is man? Man is a person and is capable, that is capable of making moral choices. Mankind, the human race, the whole species of human beings, being distinguished from all other animals by the powers of reason and speech. Of course, this throws out the whole monkey thing we don't look like monkeys. We don't act like monkeys. Hallelujah. Thank God for his deliverance. Thank God for his, his strength and his power. Thank God for his creative acts. Thank God for me being made and after the image of our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. As a man... I always want to think highly of myself as a, a good provider, as a good father, a brother in Christ, a husband, a good co-worker. But who will you say that I am as a man? How will you look at me as a man? Sometimes we are judged before we are even born into this world as a man because of the sin of Adam and of course rightly so we deserve to be judged we rightly deserve to be judged rather harshly because of Adam's sin and I've noticed that Eve is not the blame it was man it was his disobedience it comes always down to us, men, that we will always be on God's radar as being the ones to blame. We are the ones that God focuses on because we are leaders. We are his, his priests of the house. We ought to be praying for our families. We ought to be praying for our neighborhoods. We ought to be praying for our wives and schools. We are high priests. We go before God all the time. So our holiness is what is important. God looks at the holiness of man. He looks on the inside of man. Because if your holiness is not in par, is standard to what God looks at, your, your prayers are not going to be even answered. He is going to turn his back on you until you get your act together, men. It comes down to us. No matter what anyone says, man is the problem in this world. But because of Adam, our father, we were born to be no good, of course. And we're prone to be destined not to be good people. Because of this, most men grow up and have these issues flowing in their flesh to be drunks or womanizers. Some mothers may let it be known that 
when we grow up, we will be just like our fathers, a good for nothing, blank, blank, blank. You fill it out. No one seems to want to see what exactly God has in store for me as a man. I certainly believe that a man is truly not a man until he has Jesus in his life according to the word of God. You can go through this life having everything that the world offers. I found out that I need Jesus in order for me to be the man that he wants me to be. I must have Jesus. I must have Jesus. Some may say, no, you don't need Jesus. No, you don't need Jesus. Uh, his spirit. No, you don't need to be baptized in the name of Jesus, but I found out there is no other name given among men, hallelujah, that we must be saved. It's by his power that we're able to become men. It's by his power that we're able to walk upright before him and do the things that are required to us as men, as husbands, as co-workers. It gives us power to forgive others who have hurt us tremendously. It gives us power to forgive those who have sinned against us. It gives us power for when the wife and the children are not doing according to God's plan. It gives us power. He gives us power to be men of God. That's what I like about his spirit. I cannot do anything without God. I don't know how many of you have tried to do anything without him. When I look back over my life and see where God has brought me from. I could not have been here without him. It is because of God I am here. I have been here over three years. It is because of him I am here. It's because of that one person that made a difference. Sister Rosemary, she knows what I'm talking about. She invited this man here to church. And three years later, I am still here. And I appreciate the witness of Sister Rosemary. Thank God for listening to a woman. <laughs> to a woman. Believe me, I do listen. Hallelujah. What you say to me is very important. I tell my wife that all the time. So I need her, and I need to be stronger, and I need to be that man that she truly wants me to be. Looking now unto Jesus, who took the meaning of man to another level. Question was, who was the man Jesus? It was him that was to come, who the prophet describes in Isaiah 52, 13, as being exalted and extolled and very high. It says that many were astonished at thee. His visage was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. As you see this, when he was crucified, he was beaten all night long. When morning came, he stood before Pilate, and they judged him as a man. Some nights, saints of God and men, you're going to be beaten all night long. You're going to be mentally abused all night long. You're going to be physically abused maybe at work or on your job. Someone may do something to you. But we have to remember what Jesus went through. He has given us the power to continue what he started. And that's what I like about Jesus, is that no matter what we have been through, no matter what we may go through, he is our redeemer. He is our strength. He is our comforter. He will get you through the situation, even though you don't see it happening. He will get you through that situation, and when you look back, you can say, wow, this was nothing but the Almighty that has gotten me through these issues. And I know that they said, don't look back on your past, but sometimes you have to. Sometimes it's just, it's a remembrance of where God has brought you from, from the drugs and from the alcohol and from the, the, the things that, um, that you used to do. 
but it's because um, of him that we are here today. And I just want to remind you that don't get beside yourself. Don't get beside yourself thinking that I have done this, I have gotten this, I have done this. It is because of his power. You couldn't even make it without the Lord Jesus in the past. So how are you going to make it without him now? You need Jesus. No matter what anyone says, no matter what anyone says, you need the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in your life. It says in Isaiah chapter 53 and 2, and says, He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and a root out of a dry ground. He has no form or comeliness when we see him. In other words, Jesus was not a Paul Newman. He was, uh, wasn't uh, Billy D. Williams. But Jesus wasn't pretty. He wasn't a beautiful man. But it says that it was no beauty, of course, that we should desire him. He is despised and he was rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. In other words, he knew what grief was. Here was a man, speaking of Jesus, who didn't just go away. When some die, their impact on the world begins to recede. Jesus' impact has become greater over the years. The man Jesus has had an impact on art, science, and the government. We know Jesus never married, but the way he treated women led to the disillusion of the sexual double standard. Jesus had no biological children, but his kindness led others to value them as people in Matthew 19, 14. Jesus wrote no books. But his call to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul created a reverence for learning. Jesus held no office and led no army, but his example led to the emperor worship. His example of compassion for the least of us inspired us to create hospitals and relief efforts. Jesus was supreme, supremely humble in his relationships, Mark 9, 35, and Matthew 20, 26. Some may ask the question, what was so special about this man? He was no ordinary man because of the dual nature of Christ. What do you mean dual? Jesus had two distinct natures. One nature was human or flesh. The other was divine or spirit. Jesus was fully man and fully God. For example, we can say Jesus died on the cross. We mean his flesh. We said Jesus lives in our hearts. We mean his spirit is in there. Let's look at the two words Jesus and Christ. Jesus is the Greek version of Jehoshua, which means Jehovah Savior or Jehovah is salvation. So when people say, well, Jesus said, I have come in my Father's name. Well, his name was Jehovah. Then you have the answer here. God gave Jesus his name through inheritance. Jehovah is or became salvation. The role of the Son was temporary and not eternal. The Son's role was to be the Savior. The work of salvation included many roles that only a human being could fulfill including the role of sacrifice. There's a propitiation or appeasement as a substitute. He was a kinsman, a redeemer, a reconciler, a mediator, a high priest. For the plan of God, he did need a man whom he could trust and have total confidence to complete this work. Jesus was the only man that God could trust in. He couldn't trust in Abraham. He couldn't trust in Isaac or Jacob. He couldn't, da couldn't trust in David because he was a, a murderer. He couldn't trust in Habakkuk and Zephaniah. He could even trust in his angels because he even charged them with folly. So he needed a man. And this is when you know that God is in charge. When he chooses 
his own man to serve him. When God chooses the man to, to place his spirit into, that's what I like about God. Let's look at the power of the dual nature. As a man, Jesus was born a baby. We know this, Luke 2, 7. But as God, he existed from eternity. Micah 5, 2, John 1, 1 through 2. As a man, he grew mentally, physically, spiritually. Luke 2, 52. But as God, he never changes. Hebrews 13, 8. As a man, he was tempted by the devil, Luke 4 and 2. But as God, he cast out devils, Matthew 12, 28. As a man, he hungered, Matthew 4 and 2. As God, he was the bread of life and fed multitudes, John 6, 35, Mark 6, 38. As a man, he thirsted. John 19, 28. But as God gave living water, John 14, 4, 14. As a man, he grew weary, John 4, 6. As God gave rest, in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. As man, he prayed. As God, he answered prayer, John 14, 14. Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he said, I will do it. As man, he died. Mark 15, 37. As God, he raised his own body from the dead. John 2, 19 through 21. As man, he had no power. John 5, 30. As God, he had all power. Matthew 28, 13 and Colossians 2, 10. As a man, he was a servant, Philippians 2, 7, 8. As God, he was king of kings, and he was Lord of lords. We can go on and on and on and on. It's just the understanding about who Jesus really is. To understand not only that he was God Almighty, and Revelation said, I am the first and I am the last. I was one who was dead, and now I'm alive. I'm the one that sits upon the throne. He sits all by himself. There's no God beside him, because he said, I don't know any. He sits on the throne by himself. He is God Almighty. He will be God Almighty in the end. When you see him, we're going to see him in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus' humanity was more than a human body. The shell of human with God inside. He was the human in mind, body and soul and spirit with the fullness of the spirit of God dwelling in that body, soul and spirit. Jesus differed from an ordinary human. Who can be filled with the spirit of God in that he all of God's nature within him? He possessed the unlimited power authority and character of God. Although Jesus had complete human nature, he did not have the sinful nature of fallen humanity. Hebrews 4:15 says, "For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin." So we know and the Bible doesn't say, but I'm sure Jesus had women chasing him. I'm sure that, you know, things were presented to him in such a way, but that's what I like about God, his plan with Jesus. Jesus was strong enough in order, Jesus was strong enough to deny the flesh. He was strong enough to refuse the things of the world like Moses did. Jesus had a plan. Jesus was on a mission. And same with men. We should be on a mission to be holy, to serve God with our whole heart and mind and soul, not to be out there doing things that are ungodly and wicked. 
because people are watching us. People are taking note of everything we do, whether at work, whether at play. Jesus, he gives us this power in order to live right. So it's no excuse as a man and woman to not to serve God with your whole heart, with your whole mind, and with your whole soul. I understand that we're going to have issues in this life, but he had issues as well. Jesus had issues. He had difficulties. He had apostles forsaking him. He had one uh, saying that he didn't know him. They forsook him in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus had issues. Everyone forsook him. Even his father forsook him on the, on the, on the cross. But since Jesus didn't have an earthly father, he didn't inherit a sinful nature from Adam. Because of his disobedience, many shall be made righteous. Because of his obedience, many shall be made righteous. I'm sorry. The dual nature of Christ has been a major stumbling block to many people throughout history. For the first 300 years, the apostles and their followers understood who exactly Jesus was. 1 Timothy 3.16 says it all. And yet without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and he was received up into glory. According to Revelation chapter 5, the four and twenty elders and the beast fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. And Jesus said, Fear not, I am the first and I am the last. I am he that was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. So this shows you that there are not one or two or it's not three gods. It's only one that sits on the throne. And he is a man, Jesus Christ. It's not a her. It's, not, it's a man, Jesus Christ. And the reason why I emphasize that, because you have people now that reference God as a her now. But I'm letting you know that it's he, 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 he. So the only one that we're going to see on the throne is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. John said, I see one, not two or three, that sit on the throne, only one. So I know it's 1035, but I'm nervous, but I'm only giving what God's given me. So if there is a man that you really want to put your trust in or want to grow and be like, Jesus is our perfect example of what we should want to be like. I promise you, if you accept him as your savior, you don't have time to worry about him leaving you when times are tough. He will stay with your family when things are on edge. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You don't have to wonder if he's going to have an affair with someone. You don't have to worry about if he is going to come home drunk to you. You don't have to worry about, is, he, if he, is, is my husband going to come home and beat on my children or beat on me? Jesus will never leave you. He will take care of you. He will love you. He will strengthen you. He will bless your family. He will strengthen you. He will care for you. He will love you like no other man will love you. And I want to tell the men, don't be afraid of getting loved by Jesus. It's not an act of homosexuality. He just wants to say, I love you. I care for you. 
I know where you've been. I know where you've gone. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will love you. I will bless you. If you bless me, I will bless your family. That's what I like about Jesus. That's what I like about being a man. I can love. I can cry. I can shed a tear. I can, I can be frustrated. But God Almighty is on my side. He dwells in me. He dwells in me. And I thank him, and I praise him, and I magnify him. I bless his holy name. But I tell you one thing also, he will share the Holy Ghost with others. He will share his spirit with others. So that's the only thing that you have to worry about is that him sharing his spirit with others. But he just wants them to have the experience like you're having with your husband or without your husband. Because just because you're single, just because your husband may have left you, God, he just wants me to let you know that he will be with you until the end. No matter what your girlfriends may say, no matter what your mother-in-law may say, God has your back. He will take care of you. I am a witness to this. Yes, I have a wonderful wife, but I still need God to direct my life, direct my marriage, direct my footsteps in every single thing that I do. So holiness is the order of the day. Holiness is what we need. Holiness, saints of God. Holiness, holiness, holiness. Holiness. Hallelujah. But men and women are subject to failure in this world. But with Jesus, this is the theme as well, he will never fail you in this life nor in the one to come. Man, I am so thankful that he will be with me even unto death. He will be my bridge to the kingdom of God. But Jesus said, believe in God, believe also in me. This is why David names him as our rock, our salvation, he is our defender. He is our refuge. He is our hope. He is our glory. He is our God. This is why he is the only one we need and can rely on and fully put our trust in in the time of need. This is the power of the dual nature in Christ. May God bless you, saints of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. God has our back, saints. He has your back. He is your strength. He is your life. He promised to take care of you. He promised to love you. Hallelujah. No matter what men may say, I dare you. I dare you to stick with Jesus Christ. I dare you. I dare you, I double dare you to put your trust in him. And he will make all things, all things new. At this time, I understand it's, you can maybe go get your children from Ignite. And at 11 o'clock, our pastor will be bringing the word. May God bless you, saints. Bless you.